So, good morning, and uh, let us begin, I believe. Um, I still see some folks are, are, are still connecting. That's okay. So, uh, welcome to the uh, final session of Tech Talks, which we decided to um, dedicate to, um, to questions, right? So, this is um, like a summary of all the sessions that we have made so far. Uh, we have been uh, discussing many, many things in the um, in the world of extreme, many, many solutions. Uh, you have seen a lot of demonstrations. You have seen a lot of um, um, a lot of our products live, and uh, well, probably there should be a lot of questions as well. Okay, so we treat we actually um, thought a lot about okay, how how should we do that session? How should how should we organize it? And we decided to make it as informal as it is possible. So um, today we are going to answer your questions. And in order to do that, we have two things that you can actually use. The first thing is the Q&A panel. So if you want to write your question, just use that, uh, the Q&A, and we'll be picking the questions from there. Uh, the uh, second option, which is also available, is that you just raise your hand and we um, you can do that with uh, a special button in the Zoom client. You just raise your hand, we see that you raised your hand and then we unmute you and you can actually answer your question. Uh, you, you can ask your question live, okay? So um, every question counts. So we are here to answer any, any of them. And uh, then after the session, we will pick the 10 uh, best questions and we will be giving um, uh, giving away a nice book. So it's like a printed book and you can actually choose one of them. So either it's the CWNA guide written by our colleague, Dave Coleman. Uh, this is the, um, I would say the, the most comprehensive guide to, um, to, to the world of wireless technologies. So if you want to, you know, to, to enrich your knowledge about wireless, I, I would say that this is the best, uh, book that you, you should start with or uh, you can actually take the uh, Python guide, which is also a nice um, introduction to programming and um, to the Python scripting language. Okay, so uh, we decided to split the whole session into sections, okay, so that we don't kind of go from one topic to uh, jump from one topic to another. And uh, basically, we will start with uh, extreme management center. So, guys, don't be shy. Please ask your questions because we are here uh for that today okay so uh use the q a uh, or just raise your hands and uh yeah we will see how it goes yeah basically what we also uh prepared for you today is um so, so we have many many systems available live so if we need to show something uh, if you want us to show something, some you know bits and pieces of uh, various products, we are also ready to do that. Uh, probably not all of them, but um, I think that um, majority of solutions are available, and uh, the SC team is ready to uh, kind of demonstrate. Okay, so folks, we actually have uh, a few questions. So, um, uh, FC team, please come online as well. Um, so, uh, licensing changes in XMC. Is there any licensing changes in XMC that uh, we see in the future, or we can actually uh, elaborate a bit on the licensing schemes available for XMC in general?
So, well, okay, so I will pick it. So I don't know any plans about the licensing scheme or licensing changes in the XMC. In fact, we have, uh, well, licensing like it was in the past, like the XMC itself is, is licensed by uh, on the device basis. So the, by device, we mean um, the managed device. So the device to which you can um, connect from the XMC through SNMP or whatever. Yeah, but there are some some changes, like some, some not limitations, but some, uh, I don't know how to say it, some divisions that uh, not, there is a situation that not uh, every device is counted as one license. This is the main part. And this is the question we've been asked uh, you know, many times. For example, how many licenses will be consumed if I would like to connect, uh, I don't know, pink only device, yeah? So in fact, this, this uh, information uh, is available inside the XMC itself. Uh, under the administration tab, I can, I can show it, uh, let me share. Actually, Adam, my, I already, and show it. Okay, so go on. Yeah. So if you go under administration, diagnostics, system, and license diagnostics. So this will this will show you your current license count. And it's this nice table is showing the ratio of your uh, the number of APs and the license impact. For example, if you have 10 APs, the impact will be one. It's the same with the bridge port extenders. It's also accounted as one to 10 ratio. And yeah, so for, for third party systems, the, the number of ports is important. So if it's less, like less than 10 ports, it's one to 10 ratio, it's more than 10 ports, meaning like 12 port, 24 port, any kind of switch is one to one ratio. Yeah, but for non-extreme, this is uh, something we should, uh, we should, I think, address. Uh, there are some questions why we are counting non-extreme uh, less than 10 ports as 1 to 10 ratio and not counting the same for our gear. So the, que the, the answer is quite simple because on our gear, we can do much more. Uh, uh, we have more capabilities and we can uh, do many things on our gear. So that's why. Uh, so this is it. Um, regarding the licensing uh, again, so we have inside the XMC, we have also the control part and this is licensed separately. But if you have XMC like NMS product without base, so the standard version, you will get uh, 250 and system inside the NAC control. And if you have NMS advanced, like NMS-AD file, ADV, so we will get 500 from the scratch, so like in bulk. But if you would like to add some, some more licenses to the, um, to the control part, you should buy the end system licenses and so on. And regarding the changes, I don't know, anything about the changes, but we should expect, I think, but this is my personal opinion, that we should expect something if we would go to with the XMC to the XIQ, okay? Because there are plans to connect the XMC instances in, uh, into the uh, XIQ, to the cloud, and uh, to make it, you know, like a multi-tenant, uh, so maybe at, the, at this point it, we will have some. Okay, so uh, I think that's about it, it's about licensing. Um, I will take another question from Robert, uh, how to change Extreme IQ uh, plan from Connect to Pilot. In fact, the Connect, it's not the plan, it's a freemium version of the Extreme Cloud IQ. And how to change it? You should buy the pilot license and add the license to your account, in fact. But please keep in mind that if you would do it once, 
then you, back, yeah. yeah so your account will be trans converted on the fly to the pilot as a whole as a full account yeah even if you would add only one pilot license so the whole account will become pilot and you cannot go back to connect the only way to back uh, is to create additional account on the connect plan i would say or the freemium version and move your devices uh, to the to the free account so this is this is from my site maybe my colleagues have some answers. yeah I, I would add one more thing to that adam that that it is possible if you have a connect account and you have pilot, a pilot account you, you can have more than one account of course um and the system allows you once you have a connect account and a pilot account from your pilot account you can add the administrator from the connect account to that account too so when yeah. you log into the the pilot account you can see other pilot instances and other connect instances that you have so you can still manage everything from a single point so yeah but what, what you should you should at least switch to these you know different views i would say exactly i mean they, they're still separate instances but especially if you're in an msp scenario where you're managing multiple different networks you you can still have a single point of management so it allows you to fully multi-tier yeah yeah good point Yeah, um, thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Um, I, I think there's um, a bunch of questions regarding um, like XMC and Cloud IQ all together. What's the future? Um, yeah, Piotr is asking, so uh, how are they going to be interconnected in the future? So um, basically uh, we have XMC, right? So XMC is like an um, on-premise management platform that you can utilize for managing, switching, uh, wireless fabric, um, you know, servers, whatever. And uh, XIQ is our cloud platform. And uh, the plan is basically to take um, XMC and uh, convert a bit um, into a data source for XIQ. So in the future, we'll see um, the possibility for some installations um, that are running under XMC control to be exposed to Extreme Cloud IQ. So all the data is uh, will, will be fed to the cloud from XMC. And uh, that's the plan for integrating everything. So that XMC gathers all the information, it's still like an on-premise, uh, the primary solution for on-premise management. And at the same time, uh, you can actually use it to feed your um, data, to feed your um, like analytics, tele telemetry, anything back to Extreme Cloud IQ for uh, machine learning and the AI capabilities and um, machine learning enabled features. That's the future. So n n nothing actually um, changed. Um, I, I mean, Extreme Cloud IQ is not going to kill XMC and vice versa. So it's like both products are still in place and they are going to be interconnected in the future. I okay, think we, so, I think we should also add that uh, we have some companies that are using, let's say, more XMC instances because uh, of the size. So X, uh, Extreme Cloud IQ can collect the data from many XMC instances. I mean, we'll have the possibility to uh, combine the data from many. So it will be like an umbrella of uh, your XMC that are on site. Yeah, we, we call it uh, manager of managers. Manager, right? yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So any any other questions on XMC, folks? Um, um, there is also a question from Piotr about the overlapping of the feature, but I think you covered it in, in, some, in some extent. But uh, yeah. uh, the thing is that... Uh, but it is also related to the question from Conrad, I believe. Uh, mm, there are, you know, in the enterprise world, you cannot use, uh, not always you can use the cloud, okay? So it is impossible to use the cloud in some, uh, some environments. And if you have some ad uh, advanced uh, things and your advanced uh, requirements, then you should go with the XMC, yeah? So this is the, the main and the flagship on-premise uh, management. 
But in the future, I think we will see something uh, and, and we have it already like because we have the XIQ on premise. Yeah, as you can, you can, you, you may, you may know. So in the future, uh, I think this is the way forward for, for more, for smaller installations, I believe, to go with the XIQ on premise and manage from that um, instance uh, some smaller um, smaller networks. I think this is more related to the Conrad's questions. Conrad's question. Um, and uh, I don't believe XMC and Cloud IQ will overlap. The implementation or the implementation model is is different. So, well, in terms of the features, maybe. And so at some point, the XIQ will get the full capabilities of XMC, but I don't believe it will happen in the, you know, at least years time frame. This is my opinion. So maybe all of my colleagues would like to answer some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I can say something about the X435 as playing with it and um, uh, to paste um, commands with uh, shift plus insert. Um, for me, it was working. So I think it depends a bit on the terminal you use. I use putty, but uh, the several others. It should work. Don't know if that answers the question, but um. yeah, from the XMC, it, pos it is possible to use the copy and paste feature uh, mm. on the uh, on the um, yeah on the terminal. I mean, window. Just just as an idea, so the open questions are not visible for the all audience. So if you can first ask uh, ask the question for everyone and then answer. The fourth. The question was the four, three, five switches. Um, they can use the CLI terminal. Um, it seems uh, there was some problems uh, to um, copy and paste the, the commands. So uh, once uh, you have it copied, you paste it in uh, sh shift plus insert um, and it should be possible. So. Hi everyone. Uh, there was a bug in Firefox, I believe, where the shift in. Oh, was that not oh Firefox. That's that might be the issue. Yep. Yeah. So um, try other browser also. Hi, mm -hmm. Zdenek. Thanks. Hi everyone. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Zdenek. Thanks for Oh, uh, now we will get you know nah. tons of questions. <laughs> Come on. Gotcha. <laughs> So Zdenek, maybe would you like to take the security module question? When can we expect security module to be available in XMC? Uh, I don't see that question. So, uh, but in general, uh, the, the security module in XMC is something which was, or if we are talking about the security and uh, SAM, so security oh. system networking, that, that part, so that that product was tested we gathered a huge amount of responses from the field from beta testers or alpha testers so we did a lot of uh, uh you know testing and tuning of the algorithms and the plan is that we will have this module available in xiq so uh by the let's say end of the year uh it should be quicker i think it's it's based on uh, october we should have an option to have the extreme management center connected to the xiq and then the next step will be to uh to get the analytics uh going to the xiq and i mean the extreme analytics so it means on-prem uh, on-prem switches, of course, reporting to the XMC on-prem, and then this data will go to the uh, to the XIQ for the GUI and for visualization and for scalability. And then, why, once we have the data in XIQ about these flows, then this uh, uh, security assistant networking, this uh, IoT profiling and uh, learning behavior uh, will be part of the XIQ. 
So there is no plan currently to deploy the security assistant networking uh, as it was as a part of the XMC on-prem only. So uh, that's the current status, as I understand it. Okay, yeah, thank you, Zdenek. Okay, um, so... I will, I will take one question here about the VM size for XMC deployments from Maxim. Uh, the thing is that the the scaling is visible in the in the release notes. Okay, so I can show you. Um, okay, so in the release notes of the exact version you would like to install, there is a information you know about the scaling of Extreme Management Center. What does it mean really? What is the small, medium or large? And how many devices you can manage from it, okay? So please all, always check the release notes for this kind of information. And uh, release notes are publicly available on, the, on our yeah. website. So it's just extremenetworks.com and you go to documentation and find all release notes over there. Yeah, if you would like to also find it on the GTAC knowledge base page, there is also some document uh, which is uh, with the, which is named "Where do I find the extreme release notes?" and you have the li you know direct link. So there's a question regarding the the wireless part of XMC. Uh, is it still only useful for identify? What's the plan for that module? And there's also another question, so we can tie it together. Is there any plans for full XMC support for Wing without XCA? So the answer is the, the wireless part of XMC is currently available for, yes, for legacy identify controllers, as well as, as, well as for cloud app lines. So it will continue to stay like that full cloud appliance support. Uh, so you will still have the chance to see the, the, the APs, the visibility of the clients and everything in the wireless part of XMC for cloud appliance only. So Wink will not, uh, so currently Wink, uh, we have the visibility through the XCA as a proxy and we will, uh, we are not planning to add uh, native Wink uh, visibility for the wireless part of XMC, we can still have some basic visibility in terms of flex views, uh, and that will remain as it is. But do we have any plans around it? Like, but I, I don't think so. No, 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 there are no plans. No. And uh, I just will, I will just pick another one um, from Peter. Uh, if I want to use XMC just for the NAC, what is the best practice uh, in terms of license? Do I need the license for switches or ping only is enough? Well, the fa in fact, you, it's, if you would go with the ping only, the problem is that you will have the limited functions from the NAC side. For example, you will not have the capability to use any sort of uh, change of authorization and this kind of stuff. So, because for many, many devices are using SNMP for the uh, change of authorization signaling. So in this case, you will not have it, okay? So you should go then with the uh, normal license, I, I believe, yeah. And you will not be able to enforce policies, so a policy tab will be completely useless. Oh, uh, yes, yes, but you know, of uh, we can assume that maybe there are some, uh, you know, uh, the uh, third party devices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I so, mean, if, if, if it's like a price sensitive project, so of course, why not? So, because you will, you will reduce the, the NMS licensing for, for one to 10 ratio. So the, for the ping only devices. Yeah, the, I believe we have it still, uh, I think. Uh, if you would like to go only with the NAC, 
part, you can go with the subscription, I believe. Is it still valid or no? So let me, let me comment more. Everything which these guys said is absolutely valid, but there are other options also. So let me summarize it. So option, if we are talking about NAC project only, okay? NAC project only means you don't care about analytics, you don't care about flex views, you don't care about statistics of switches, you don't care about ports of those switches. So nothing really like that. You just care about NAC. And the, that option is you can use a subscription-based model where you go per user or per switch, and then you have everything for per switch, but per user, that model is absolutely valid. And there is one thing which is very well hidden and very, uh, very unknown. So option two, which was also mentioned as the pink only device, but it gives you limitations regarding uh, uh, re-authentication and regarding uh, um, the visibility because we will not see on what port as this device, for example, connected. But there's a third thing which I mentioned, it's very well hidden. When you add the switch to the XMC, when you are adding one switch by one, there is an option to uh, add it as a monitoring device only. And if you add that device as a monitoring device only, you still define the SNMP credentials, you still define the CLI credentials. And in that case, the device will be onboarded to the extreme management center, but you can do nothing with that in the extreme management center, but you can use an as extreme control and what that means is it does not consume a node license at all. So it's not one to 10, but it does not consume a license, which at the end means that you can have NMS advanced five, for example, or NMS advanced 10, and then you can add as many switches or as many access points if, as you wish. And you license only N systems in the NUC. However, be careful, you do nothing with the switch. You, even, even if the switch is offline, you will get that after eight hours. So even the monitoring is not there, okay? But if we are fighting NAC against NAC, this is an option. Well, in the foreseeable future, I think we will have additional product for the NAC only deployments, which will be extreme NAC, okay? So I think this would be also the, the way uh, to overcome it. And, uh, and the licensing will be kind of different comparing to the, uh, to the XMC part, yeah. Um, John is speaking. I'm picking up a couple of questions on the, uh, from um, the attendees. Uh, one is from Jan uh, Zontek. Do you have any plan to add NAT functionality to SLX series? And the answer is, it's not on the roadmap uh, uh, as of today. So um, it may change in the future, but uh, the current view that it's not um, on the roadmap for, on the, for the SLX. There's another question from Lucas Malone. Uh, do you need to add the Cloud IQ license when you first buy uh, an AP, or can you buy it later uh, when you expand? Uh, and what is the support for this uh, AP without cloud license then? So the answer is yes, you don't, or no, you don't need to add your cloud IQ license um, when you buy your AP. You can buy AP and, uh, and uh, connect it, and you had there say a free version of the cloud IQ. It has some, um, uh, a, a quite nice functionality. You can uh, onboard, you can uh, manage your device, but our limitation as to how much you can do. Um, so client uh, 360, for instance, is not included. So um, uh, no, you don't need a Cloud IQ license and you can buy it later on if you want to extend your um, the functionality. Yeah, the, 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 just, the adi additional part of the question is what is the support for the AP itself, for, like for the hardware? Uh, but uh, in fact, do. in mm. fact, uh, they, uh, starting 6th of April, I believe, uh, we have changed some requirements for new purchases. Okay, so if it, it, right now it is impossible to buy the AP without the, um, the support contract. Okay, so for, for, for majority of the APs, 
you have something which is called mandatory attach and you should buy at least TAC NTOS support for this, uh, for the equipment, okay? And yeah, it, it differs from uh, AP model to, to AP, yeah, but you should, you should always check with us uh, exact requirements, okay? And, uh, th this is only to cover, let's say, hardware part, hardware and software. Well, well, yeah, hardware and software both, but on the access point itself. So it's like, you know, it, it gives you the access to the tech. So you can open up um, cases, you can ask some questions. It gives you like full, full support from Extreme, but it does not include the license, which you apparently do not require to have in order to connect back to Extreme Cloud. And um, just a few words on the naming. So. Um, the free version of cloud, we call it connect. Okay. So you can buy an access point, you can buy a switch, you connect it to the cloud. You don't need any licenses for that. The next level is called pilot. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, the, the, the first license level. So you need to acquire a license for that. And it's called pilot because, um, you actually having that license, you get the full uh, control and full access to all the features of the extreme cloud IQ. And um, there are actually two more licenses that, that are coming. The uh, next one will be Copilot, uh, which enables a lot of uh, things um, connected to machine learning and data analysis. And then the next license um, is called Autopilot. It's, um, it's the full featured access to, to the cloud with the AI functionality on top. So when the cloud itself is able to control your wireless and wired network and to make some actions in order for that to work um, in, in the most efficient way. So th these two licenses, Copilot and Autopilot, they are coming and uh, hopefully we'll see them by the end of this year. Uh, uh, Kirill, I have a, a, a table yeah, showing yeah, yeah. the Go different, ahead. so I can show it on the, uh, share it if you, um, if you want me to. Yeah, y yes, please go ahead. You were just sharing. Um, I'm Hopefully you, you see this um, chart. So um, yeah, yeah, we can see, but just uh, start the uh, yeah, start presenting because we see a lot of rules. Unfortunately, my machine is really really slow when 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 flipping from uh, from um, um, uh, and probably also you see. Um, So this is this is a yeah, it's it's um, um, it will take too long to go through them uh, as uh, uh, feature by feature, but you can see that at least in the beginning that uh, you can uh, uh, you have the auto provisioning tool, you have the uh, device and client monitoring function, you have the RF planning uh, support, you have the uh, guided network configuration support, the uh, security uh, piece with the dot one X and private piece of key and you could also do uh, device and client monitoring with the uh, without the with just the, the uh, free version the connect but as you can see also on the uh, far right for the pilot there's a whole list of uh, of advanced features that you get from uh, from uh, the the pilot um, version okay, okay. So uh, I will pick another two questions. Uh, there is a question from Peter. Uh, if we are planning to provide recording of CLI sessions in, any, in, in XMC, I don't, I don't think so. If you have a decent uh, commercial um, judgment for this you can you can raise the feature request on contact our uh, SE to raise it for you but i don't think we have it in planning another question is from yuri uh, about the ap 7500s uh the mm, how long we are going to support those models and, uh, and how long the new Wing 7 firmware versions will be released for this, those IPM models. The thing is that you should be always stick with our um, end of say policy, okay? So we are announcing the half a year before the end of sale, we are announcing that we will end of sale such products, okay? 
and afterwards you will get the new versions of the wing uh, or of, on the of the code you will get the new versions for two years it is described in the policy yeah so you can you can read it in in our policy for two years you will get the new versions but for the five years from the end of sale you will get the patches okay so at some point you will not have the possibility to install the newer versions for example i don't know wink 8 or whatever of course but i don't know if it, if, it, if it will happen but but if you have something like 7.4 you will get you can get the patches if uh, if it's needed of course yeah so but no new features and nothing like that so this is just a normal policy of the extreme. So I can take yeah, one. Uh, ah, okay. please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, uh, yeah. I just saw a couple of questions regarding roadmap, and uh, can we give some roadmaps on this and that? So uh, I just want to elaborate quickly on that one. Um, so basically, we will not give any, um, I would say, roadmap um, items here uh, on this. I would say on this session because we are um, obliged to some legal, um, I would say, constraints, right? So it, it's not that we, we we can talk about roadmap all the time. Um, th there is a question um, regarding that uh, with Compass updates available to the partners. So you guys receive some uh, roadmap views which are quite short in time. And um, the reason behind is that the whole development in Extreme um, has changed a bit and uh, has changed the uh, the approach to developing uh, products and to developing software as well. So we, we have moved to the agile approach, okay? So uh, the reason the reason why the roadmap is quite short in terms of features that we put in, in there is because with agile development, you actually have a lot of features and you approach the development in a really, really short sprints, right? So it's called sprints. Uh, so that is why, you know, the, the features are, you know, they, we, we have the long list of features, but in, um, in, in the process of development, they're changing constantly. And, you know, um, for this month, we decide to prioritize this set of features, then they change and et cetera, et cetera. So this is just um, a bit different approach to developing products. That's why the, um, the roadmap updates that you see are quite short in period, but there are Absolutely, there is a strategy behind the product development and uh, th there is a huge, huge roadmap like for all the features. But in this case, I would ask you to address us, um, well, contact us personally in order to get some detailed information on that. So we, we, we won't do any roadmap updates here, okay? <clears throat> There's so, a question from Piotr. Um, uh, sorry for my, my lack of Polish understanding uh, of pronunciation. Question regarding inside architecture on VSP. Are we free to use any virtual machine without re within resource limits or are there any other limitations? So um, you're free to install any third party VM you may uh, wish or desire within the uh, the resource limits that are on the specific uh, uh, switch that you in, want to install it on. So be aware that uh, on the different models, there are differences between the number of CPU and the, um, and the uh, say, uh, memory resources and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, fundamentally, yes, you can install any, any VM you may want or desire. And even a colleague uh, showed us uh, playing Doom on a, um, that was on an SLX, but the same goes for uh, for the VSPs. And I presume also on the uh, Exo switches that do support the inside architecture. Mm -hmm. So I can take the, the, the compliance question. So is there any plan to extend extreme compliance module for other vendor devices, third party devices? In fact, we already have it today. And out of the box, we, we have the, the regimes, the audit tests, the, the, the by default audit tests available for our own gear. But you can always create uh, regimes uh, for third party devices. And in fact, uh, this was uh, one of the topics that we covered in the first session. 
So I, I recommend you, if you haven't done so, to, to watch the first session, which is also showing how we can create uh, custom regimes. Uh, and that was the Cisco device. We were, we were doing it. Uh, so yes, currently we have it already. Yeah, but the question I think is if we will have it uh, like uh, out of the box. I don't think so. Uh, if the question is that, no. It will... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. I don't think so. It, it, it is not our job, you know, to, uh, to support uh, the third party vendors on this, on this matter. But if you have the, the, such customer maybe, and you would like to um, use the uh, compliance engine to, um, to address the third party, this is the good opportunity for you to, you know, sell your uh, services and create your, regi re your regimes based on the already pre what we have already prepared for our gear. Yeah? So it's up to you, but no, not, up the, not, uh, not out of the box. There is, there is one thing which I would like to add to that, and I put it to the answer already. Uh, mm -hmm. If you go that path and you uh, create your own regime uh, with your own tests, even for the third party equipment, that's absolutely fine. You can export that and you can import it at different XMC installation. So what I'm trying to say is that if you have whatever device, for example, Cisco, you create your own regime, then as Adam already mentioned, you can sell that if you wish, because it's very easy to export that from your XMC and import it to the customer XMC. Uh, other option is to share it with the GitHub. If you don't want to sell it, you just want to contribute and make it available for other customers also and benefit from that, that's absolutely okay and absolutely possible also. So there, uh, there are two workflows available. It's in combo where you can export and import the regime uh, from one XMC to another XMC. Okay, I can take a question about the um, Aruba ClearPass onboarding guests. So what can we oppose to Aruba ClearPass onboarding guests? Um, I think for onboarding, we can do a lot um, already in XIQ. So we are, for BYD onboarding, we have the private appreciate key option. You can onboard, um, your clients uh, with a uh, uh, unique uh, private pre-shared key. Um, and for uh, NEC, we can, uh, we have our A3 cloud managed NEC solution. And we can uh, add um, switch uh, wired uh, security on the, in that uh, part. And I think it's based on the requirements uh, from the customer, we, but we can do a lot within um, XRQ already. Um, I can take another one and that's is if it's possible to have two different devices within the same IP address in Cloud IQ in the same site or instance and that's yes you can have um, XIQ of our Cloud IQ is only management so you can have more than one um, device with the same IP address and also with the same name so you can have two devices with the same name device name or with the same IP address in the same uh, XIQ instance. For the bring your own device, we can add as well that with uh, control, we have uh, guests and IoT management that is usually used with control in order to simplify the onboarding for a customer. Uh, so for guests, for providing um, access to someone in an organ customer organization to populate the local database with MAC addresses, for instance, or with usernames and manage them afterward. So we have a, a solution with HMC and control using guest and IoT manager as well. Hey, Kirill, take your questions because you mark them as you would like to answer them. Yeah, sure. So, um, so regarding Wing and uh, Wing user interface, so we all basically know that Wing UI is based on Flash technology, which is going to be uh, deprecated like by the end of the year. So the plan is to um, the plan is to have the new uh, user interface for Wing um, around October, 
Okay, so we will see the new graphical user interface not based on uh, Flash in uh, October timeframe. Okay, and uh, the other question regarding feature requests, is there a channel for uh, feature requests or how, how do we actually, uh, what, what is the mechanism to request for a new feature? So they, the, the mechanism is pretty simple. You just ask <coughs> your fellow extreme systems engineer and uh, we have a process to initiate new feature requests internally. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Okay. Okay, so another question from Conrad. Uh, what is the plan for licensing extreme control? Are we going to switch into per user licenses in, instead of per session? In fact, this is not uh, exactly what, I, what we have, but I, I can understand what you mean. Um, uh, yeah, so I mentioned already about the extreme NAC, so stay tuned for that. Uh, because right now in the extreme, either in XMC and extreme control, we have it based on the MAC address, okay? And the MAC address is counted in the uh, 24 hours window, uh, counted from, you know, midnight to midnight. And this is, this is how it is. In, I think the, the, uh, the new product or the new, approach would be to have the licensing based on the uh, concurrent active sessions okay so i think you know you should you should be uh, you should wait a bit for for that okay but it will be not inside the xmc okay and, and not in extreme control And another question I would like to pick it. Uh, this is not about the XMC at all, but uh, it's about the sticky client issue for VoIP clients on Wi-Fi networks. You know, the sticky clients, no matter if, if, it, if it's about the voice over IP or whatever, you know, network it may be, you know, the, the sticky clients issue is always the same. Uh, so the client uh, just sticks to some access point and, you know, try to, to communicate with the access point while having, uh, you know, the better one in the vicinity. Uh, in fact, the decision about the roaming is mostly, mostly, I, I, I'm using the word mostly because in the, there are some techniques to, to, somehow kick out the uh, or, or, or force uh, the device to move to another one, such as, you know, the, the protocols uh, inside the Wi-Fi world, uh, especially um, designed for these, these, these things. And, but in fact, the sticky client problem is mostly related to the design problem. Okay, if you have these kind of things, uh, most probably you have the wrong design or wrong setup. Okay, you should think about the basic rates. So you should think about make the cells a bit smaller than you have. And you should maybe um, go to the device itself, the end, end device, and check what are the settings about the uh, what the settings are about the uh, regarding the roaming you have something like roaming uh, um, I don't remember uh, the name uh, like this is some kind of setting which directs uh, the, the end, end device where, where when it should roam okay at what, at what, at at what level of the signal yeah because the device decides about the roaming okay I think it should be 11 11k probably ah uh, well not really you know each and every driver in, in even inside the windows you have something like mobility uh, aggressiveness uh, aggressiveness yeah, yeah exactly mobility aggressiveness that, roaming aggressiveness yeah yeah and you then you have the possibility to at least roughly to set it, set it up, okay? But the problem is inside the Wi-Fi itself and, and, the, and inside the design, yeah? 
And about yeah. Wi-Fi 6, about Wi-Fi, of course, we have some possibilities to steer the client, which is not, you know, supporting any of, of the protocols. We can have the possibility to, um, to force the client to move based on RSSI level, uh, see, seen by the controller, for example, but I would not recommend it, you know, if this is not a roaming at all. It's just a kick, kick the user outside from the network and then the end system device will start to find uh, additional AP, yeah? So this is not the case, I think. You should design first. This is my point. And one of the most common mistakes is to have the highest possible uh, DBM for the AP. So it's, it's really, <laughs> it's, it's a killer for, for the wireless. So because the, you should think about the communication as bi-directional. So the, we have the mobile devices and their, their signal strength is quite low that, compared to uh, the APs. So mm -hmm. the AP signal strength also should be comparable to the mobile devices. And we should always design for the least uh, capable device in this case. Yeah, and I mentioned about the, 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 the making the cells smaller. This yeah. is Increase the minimum well. basic rate. Yeah. Also, probe suppression can be used, but generally just increasing the minimum basic rate will help a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so the, in the past, the, 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 there were times that we, that almost everybody, you know, designed uh, the networks towards the coverage. This is not a good way going forward. Yeah. You should, you should design for the capacity, not the coverage. So the coverage is kind of, well, maybe not irrelevant but it's it's not the, the the most important thing do not do not install the ap's in the corridors install them in the in the rooms where exist where the clients exist yeah. so uh let me answer the question from bartek uh what is the future of nac assessment slash remediation features so let me take it a little bit broader. So currently, if we talk about the extreme control, we do have an option to do uh, agent-less scan and agent-based scan, right? So the agent-less scan, it's based on uh, the assessment engine, which lives in the extreme control. Uh, the agent-based scan is uh, based on the application which you install on Windows or on Mac. So that's current uh, situation from extreme. There is um, much, let's say, more often used way today, which is integration with third-party devices, so with third-party MDM solutions and with third-party solutions. The reason why it is more often used today is because customers and definitely uh, IT operation people, they do not like another agent to be installed and another tool to needs to be maintained. So we we see a lot of requests for that, but at the end, it is not something which is deployed. Uh, so that's, that's, the, that's the current status, and we see that status for, for extreme control, and we see the, state, the same status for A3. I mean, uh, it is not being used much. The integration is used much more. So there is, uh, regarding the answering that question, there is currently no really plan to uh, de develop more on the agent-based uh, scan. Uh, so the agent base is as it is, and it will stay. It is still product, which will, which will be in, in the offer. However, we don't see the traction. We don't see customers buying it. We don't see the real request for that in the real. So uh, we focus much more now on these integrations with uh, MDM solutions and with third party solutions, which from my point of view, it, it really makes sense also. So the goal is that the customer has uh, MDM solution installed like mobile Iron AirWatch or, or Intune or G Suite uh, installed on uh, their devices and it can be even Windows devices and it can be Mac devices and it's absolutely fine and then use that solution to report the vulnerabilities and report the compliance status to the next solution, whatever it is, it is extreme control or it is A3. So the solution or the, the situation is very similar here. 
Uh, regarding the A3 aspect, with A3, we do have the WMI, Windows Management Instrumentation approach, which is uh, similar to the agent-less scan, which we do have with Extreme Control. So the situation is very similar in the A3 uh, situation today. In the A3, we don't have any agent, so we really need to use the agent from the third party. I hope I answered that question. If not, then please um, ask again. I can take the exhaust one. So the question about uh, stacking for controller bridge. So this is planned, but it is not planned in a <clears throat> release that is going to come uh, very early. So we have planned it in the future and it's uh, probably end of 2020 or, um, or later. So it's uh, for 30.8 plus. So we are still um, considering this feature, but it's not in a, in, a, in a release coming very soon. Zdenek, we have another question for you ex explicitly. <laughs> yeah, I tried, I tried to, to type that answer, so I will answer it live. Yes, yeah, so for Piot, the question is, uh, you mentioned the agentless scanner. As far as I know, it is the same. That's correct. Uh, so the, the company which uh, does the uh, development of the agent is Saint. And uh, uh, the question is, can we, I'm sorry, it disappears. So can we uh, in, uh, expect some more, uh, some more integrations to the GUI? Uh, so with A.5, there was a plan to develop, to, to uh, transfer all the NAC manager uh, features and settings, so the Java client, to the GUI, uh, including the agent-based and agent-less to be completely there. Uh, unfortunately, this is not on the plate today, so we develop some and it will not come everything in 8.5. So in the 8.5, we still will have the Java client available. So uh, that's part of the answer. Yes, we are planning to add more of that uh, to the GUI, but it will not be in 8.5. And regarding the, the, the same configuration itself, uh, there is no plan to really uh, go deep, uh, deep dive to that integration. So if you really want to create your own uh, same scan, it's absolutely okay. There is, a, there is a documentation on how to do that. There is a knowledge base article how to do that, but it will not be in the XMC GUI. The reason for that is because it is a huge, uh, let's say, uh, investment regarding resources and regarding development of that, uh, which uh, is not really uh, so heavily used and it is quite unique. So if the saint changed the GUI, we would need to synchronize and we would need to change the GUI also or change the API calls for that. So that's not planned uh, to go deep as deep as uh, uh, really being able to create those scans in Saint. There is a GUI for that, which is developed by Saint, and that's, that's, that's the plan. Okay, so, um, thank you, Zdenek. Um, yeah, j just, um, so guys, we are 60 minutes into the session, so we have like uh, half an hour. Um, just, um, Mm, to remind you, so we have touched different topics. I understand that that it didn't go into like you know separate sections that we planned, and this is absolutely fine. Uh, just probably to uh, remind you that we were planning to answer also the questions for uh, Extreme Cloud IQ, for Extreme Fabric Connect, and um, some general switching and wireless hardware questions as well. So if you have any of them, please go ahead and ask. Okay, so it's Extreme Cloud IQ, it's uh, Fabric Connect, and uh, it's just uh, switching on wireless hardware uh, questions in general. There is one question that I can take it because I already asked it before. Uh, when will Spectrum Intelligence support uh, edit expected for the new uh, 305C, 510C, AP? So, uh, the answer to that is it's, it looks like it's a bug uh, currently because Broadcom made a change in the SDK we use for the new platforms that affected this spectrum intelligence operation. So 
it's currently tracked. Uh, I don't have the exact timing, but it's going to be introduced uh, in the near future. Yeah, I can add something to that. Yeah. Um, so far as I can see, it will be fixed in one of the next releases, so summer time frame. Perfect. Okay, guys, uh, so we have a specific um, question for Fabric Connect. Uh, Claude, okay. probably. You know, I, I Johnny will jump on it, so <laughs> no problem. <laughs> uh, so, um, when we are using ERS in Fabric Connect uh, mode, it's uh, usually because we want to have more flexibility in the design. So, with Fabric Attach, mm -hmm. we only have dual attach connection to a couple of uh, um, VSPs, core, core switches. But as soon as we have Fabric Connect, it's more flexible. We can have a square, we can have a ring, we can have connection to different uh, switches as well. So we have multiple customers saying, well, it's very convenient to be able to connect the uplinks where we want and with the topology we want. So uh, you have probably heard that we are going to release um, some switches that uh, will be Fabric Connect uh, capable, so smallest VSP to have that uh, capability. So uh, stay tuned. We still have uh, an idea that uh, Fabric Connect is one way to go and to implement edge devices as well. But Fabric Attach is the easy way to connect stackable switches to a pair of core switches. So yes, Fabric Connect um, does have some advantages in the layout and in the way we interconnect switches together. So um, Claude, maybe just add to that, uh, the question is uh, written as a Fabric Connect, but as far as I understand, the Exos does not Fabric Connect. So maybe it is about Fabric Attach and then the question I read is, what is the difference or why should I go with ERS if I can go with Exos as both do Fabric Attach against the VSP? Uh, so maybe some color on that. Okay, so, um, so if we um, compare ERS Fabric Attach with Exos Fabric Attach, basically we have the same functionality. So the goal is really to dynamically create a VLAN and I seat and configure uh, uplinks on both. So today we are um, extending a lot of um, functionalities within Exos to be able to do exactly the same as we do with ERS. So ERS uh, were able to support Fabric Attach a long time ago. So we have implemented some uh, dynamic uh, radius assignment uh, to um, some port and authentication user uh, that are not yet implemented in Exos, but uh, with all the new releases we have got, we are coming very close to uh, Exos. So we all know that the way to go is Exos for all the new platform we have. So we will get uh, a new for 50, new uh, we have new for 60, and we will get new for 40 as well. So we know that the ERS switches uh, products are uh, like they are. We do not get any new uh, ERSs. There will be um, a new uh, type of uh, VSP, low end VSP switch to replace the ERS. So uh, I think uh, today the EXO switch are the perfect choice with Fabric Attach uh, to the core. So I, I would go for uh, EXOS as much as possible. So, yeah, thank you. I do see uh, maybe another aspect here also. If the customer has already ERSs and the customer is very happy with the GUI and CLI and he is used to and uh, he doesn't or he, she, the customer doesn't want to change, then it is uh, good to go with ERSs. 
but uh, I would start to talk with the customer regarding uh, the future, regarding the policy, regarding the benefits of, of scripting and uh, all the features which Exos has and to, to prepare the customer for the future because currently we can do uh, very much of what the ERS can do with, with, the, with the fabric attached against the, the, uh, the fabric itself. So that's, that's safe to go with Exos. And uh, yep, that's it. Yeah, maybe I think maybe to add some more details about uh, the the new platforms that we will be introducing as the uh, fabric connect to the edge. Uh, it's it's going to be dual personality uh, hardware, so you will be ha have the you will have the flexibility uh, with the same SKU with the same hardware to choose to boot the uh, operating system as uh, VOS or as Exos. So the, uh, for going forward, uh, these will be our access uh, switching strategy. Uh, and in general, also in the, in the future, we will have the triple boot with SLXOS uh, for the data center uh, equipment. But initially for the 455 and 445 and their respective VSP models, we, are, we will be having the dual personality of the hardware with just one SKU and the, the naming will change. And for the zero touch, you will have the, again, you will have the option to, from Cloud IQ, just boot the, uh, boot the switch as an EXO switch or as a WAS switch, depending on the use case. So if you would like to have the, the fabric connect to the edge, just boot, it, boot the device uh, as WAS device. Or uh, if you would like to have some uh, policy capabilities or scripting capabilities of EXOS, then just boot as EXOS. Yeah, and uh, we still have a question on the fabric side. So, for the possibility to mesh VMANs, like QNQ interfaces into fabric. Honestly, I don't know uh, the answer to that question. Uh, I, I don't Or think... maybe, maybe I will take it. Yeah. Finally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So VMAN is uh, Q, it's the name of the QNQ uh, functionality on Exos, and uh, VMAN are rather used in service provider markets. So it's a double tax uh, on on uh, on on VLANs. Uh, so I believe that there is no really, uh, let's say, uh, real. Um, I I do not really see real example uh, where you should or could use it, but of course, uh, if you are using VMAN with Ether type 8100, then uh, from the from the fabric point of view, it looks like a normal uh, tact uh, frame. So you could possibly uh, send a QNQ traffic into into fabric uh, 802.1 Q interface, and it should work. I see no reason why it should not work, but. Let's say I don't really see a specific, um, uh, let's say, um, use case for it. In other words, we need the use case and to create the solution for that um, case by case. Yeah, I think it's a case by case. Uh, we should, let's say, uh, SE should uh, look into it and, and uh, find a solution. Okay, so um, yeah, was, we have a question regarding roadmap for um, X445. I, I think, Emery, you touched a bit. Um, this platform, so it's coming, uh, and uh, this is going to be one of the platforms, platforms which we call unified hardware. So uh, it's coming, and uh, we expect it to to come early next year, I believe.
Okay, any other questions, guys? Extreme Cloud IQ, Fabric Connect, um, switching wireless. Well, actually, whatever platform you, you might think of. Okay. Okay, so um, we have covered uh, 40 plus, I would say, uh, questions, right? Oh, we have Piotr uh, raising his hand. Is it? Uh -huh. Okay, guys. I see, uh, yeah, I just uh, see that some folks uh, raise their hands and uh, then the hands disappear. So uh, I don't know what, what, whether it was on purpose or just accidentally. Um, okay, so um, um, anyway, if uh, you still have any questions uh, that were not addressed properly, you know where to find us, right? Uh, just uh, uh, again, a reminder that uh, on our mini website, en.extremenetworks.com, uh, you can find all the uh, access to all the recordings for all the Tech Talk sessions. So this one was the eighth, right? This was a long journey. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I oops, sorry. And I would like uh, to say uh, thank you to all of you guys for staying with us, for being with us on those sessions. Um, I hope it was useful. Um, stay tuned for um, for some other sessions to come as well. So we're thinking about some other interesting uh, topics to cover. And uh, hopefully, uh, very, very soon, we will be able to meet you all in person. Finally, hopefully this um, uh, little situation will end sometime. Okay, with that said, I would like to say a big thank you to the team. So um, great job, guys, today and uh, during all the sessions. Uh, I wish you all the best. Stay safe, be healthy, and uh, yeah, good luck. Thank you, guys. Thank you.